Hello and welcome back everybody. Today we're going to be going over the top five or I guess the bottom five worst overclocks in Deep Rock Galactic as of right now in season four. Our very first overclock is roll control for the breach cutter. This is a clean overclock that makes it so whenever you fire the breach cutter, if you hold down the trigger, you can then spin the breach cutter shots. That's all it does. This does make it so you can have a rather interesting plasma trail with it, which is kind of like its major pro. You could also have it with triple line split and just hit some of the bigger enemies a little bit easier that way, mostly with the rock box enemies where you can potentially hit all of their weak spots, although triple line split with the breach cutter already does that really well. There is no downside to this overclock. It is only a slight upside with the spin. So not necessarily the most flashy overclock, but not necessarily one of the best overclocks. And generally considered one of the worst for the breach cutter. Coming in at number two, we have magnetic cooling unit. This is for the EPC, and this is another clean overclock that just makes it so you generate less heat and you don't overheat your EPC as much. Now this overclock by itself is actually quite good because it's nothing but a pro to the actual weapon. The main downside comes when you're comparing it to all the other overclocks that the EPC has. The main advantage that this one's going to have over the others is just simply that it makes it easier to learn how to EPC mine which is a very valuable skill to learn as a driller and using the EPC because you can get a lot of materials really, really easy with this. The major downside though, like I said, is when you compare it to the other overclock options because it doesn't do as much damage as something like Persistent Plasma. It isn't as ammo efficient as Heat Pipe and it doesn't have all the extra bonuses that energy rerouting another clean overclock has where you just get faster charge speed and more ammo, meaning that you could use it even more often. So it just kind of gets directly outcompeted in any of those roles, as well as any of the other roles like Heavy Hitter does more damage per shot, so it would make more sense for a spam fire build. And even Overcharger does more damage from a charge shot perspective, so if you're using it just for charge shots, that one is also better. Again, not a bad overclock, just an overclock that gets outshadowed by all the other overclocks. However, it does have one major role, and that is if you do get it early on, and you aren't familiar with EPC mining, it is going to be the easiest one for you to learn that with. Our third overclock is another very simple clean overclock. This is full chamber seal for the burst pistol. This gives you a slightly faster reload speed and slightly more damage. These are very slight, the reload speed is not very much, and the damage is not very much. So this is just a slightly better than average burst pistol, which the burst pistol is quite good. So this isn't that bad, but it does get out competed by other options that the burst pistol has. You could go with compact mags if you want a whole bunch of bullets, you could go with experimental rounds if you want more damage, or you could go with lead spray if you wanted even more damage. So again, it's just one of those overclocks that kind of gets outcompeted by the other overclocks, but this one is less interesting than something like the EPC. For our fourth overclock, we have Reatomizer. Reatomizer is a very fun overclock to use for the coil gun. It doesn't necessarily give you that much of an advantage. It can in certain circumstances, especially when it's bugged and then it has a bunch of weird features to it. But currently it's not bugged, so it is working as intended. You can just transfer effects from one enemy to another when you shoot through that enemy and into another one. This requires some setup, it does require some coordination, and just applying effects onto enemies may not even be the strongest thing that you can do with the coil gun anyway. Especially when you consider some of the other overclocks that the coil gun has like Hellfire, where you can just apply fire to enemies as well as electricity thanks to its tier 5. So another overclock that kind of gets outshadowed by other ones, and is mostly there just for its meme purpose. And then for our fifth and final overclock, we have Homebrew Powder. I picked this one for the Sabata because I still don't tend to use it very much with the Sabata, even after the Sabata got buffed. This just randomizes your damage between 80% and 140%, evening out to 110%. So generally, you're getting a little bit more damage per shot with the Sabata. It's nothing major, but it does help with the Sabata overall. So it's not a bad thing either. And with all the buffs that the Sabata has gotten since it's reworked, it's pretty acceptable. And that kind of brings us to one major thing that I would like to say about Deep Rock right now. And that is kind of a problem for, I guess, me as a content creator and potential other creators. There isn't a whole lot of overclocks to complain about anymore, which is pretty cool in its own way. I actually really like that about Deep Rock. I love the way that things were changed around in this season in particular, where they really dealt with a lot of the problem overclocks. Most overclocks have some sort of pro and con to them. Some of them only have pros or a majority of pros with very few cons. And I really like the way that they changed this before. I once did a video like this about a year ago, I believe, just talking about the overclocks that I really wanted changed. 
and a lot of them did get changed. Double barrel and manual guidance cutoff were two of the major ones that I really wanted changed because they just felt like such useless overclocks. They actually felt like a downside to the weapon. Manual guidance cutoff was kind of just boring and didn't really do a whole lot and it was only a downside if you just didn't hold down the hurricane shots anyway so if you're fighting big things it didn't even matter if you're fighting hordes of enemies it didn't matter it was only kind of annoying if there was small enemies that you wanted to pick off one at a time and double barrel was just frankly a worse version of the regular double barrel you got a slight damage buff but every time you had to shoot you had to fire out both barrels making it only really useful against big enemies which you were already going to do that for so it didn't really help against crowd control it didn't really help for the smaller enemies it didn't help for just picking things off. It was just a suboptimal overclock. Now, both those overclocks have been changed to be really, really cool overclocks because we have Rocket Barrage now with manual guidance cutoff being just completely deleted from the game. And even though Rocket Barrage, I would not consider one of the strongest overclocks for the Hurricane, it's incredibly fun to use. And that's kind of all you need to have with an overclock. I don't really care how overpowered it's going to be or how strong it is. If it's fun, I'm going to use it, and I should probably loop this back to roll control with the breach cutter and say that I like roll control quite a bit, even though it is considered one of the weakest overclocks for the breach cutter. That doesn't really matter because you're not nerfing the breach cutter, and the base breach cutter is already so strong. It rips through everything without any issue, so quote-unquote nerfing it, it's not even nerfing it, it's just giving it another option to use, even if you never want to use the option, it's still there. So I don't even see that really as a downside. And as for Double Barrel, it got completely reworked as well. They really gave it a really cool and interesting interaction against everything now because you actually use the shockwave damage directly from the shotgun, which we've had overclocks that kind of do that before. Like the microwave gun has one of these and the coil gun has one of these, uh, or sort of has one of these where the closer you are to enemies, the more damage you're going to do. That is pretty cool in its own way, but we already had a mod for the double barrel, which was, I'm, I'm going to assume, the least picked mod in that tier, where you get more shockwave damage, because nobody really cared about shockwave damage. It, it was a slight bonus to you, and it was only really good for clearing up smaller enemies like the regular grunts, which the double barrel already had no issues clearing them up, so why get closer to make it more dangerous for you? It definitely made that mod way, way better since Double Barrel came out and made it a really cool and really fun way to play the Double Barrel just in any sort of match. Scout now has incredible crowd clear with it, assuming you are within those ranges, and if you're okay with getting within those ranges to enemies, it can do absolutely massive damage to them, which is really awesome. It's something that just feels really good on the gun. Is it the strongest or necessarily the best overclock for the Double Barrel? I can still see Special Powder being a little bit more useful for bouncing yourself around the cave, but that's in a utility role. And I can also see Jumbo Shells being a little bit more useful in terms of just burst damage towards large enemies and at a safer distance. So it may or may not be one of the better overclocks, but at least it's something fun and it has its own niche. That is really, really cool. So I just really wanted to thank Ghost Ship for balancing this game so well. I think it's one of the best balanced games that I've played in forever. It's... Everything seems viable right now. Everything seems pretty good. Everything doesn't feel necessarily overpowered. There are a couple things that feel overpowered, but not everything feels overpowered. It just feels like you can build however you would like and you can make whatever you would like. I like making a whole bunch of different builds and I really love the new Randomizer beer. It is super, super fun. But for the most part, I haven't really gotten a whole lot of like bad builds. Like on not this last Elite Deep Dive, but the one previous. That build I got was kind of iffy, but even then, it's still carrying me through. And I think that that is really, really cool, and it should be something that is appreciated, because there's not a ton of games that I've played, at least any time recently, where I felt like everything is pretty well balanced, everything kind of gets along with one another, and everything is pretty viable. So I don't really see any sort of, like, elitism in the Deep Rock community, at least I haven't seen a whole lot of it where people are just saying, like, this is the best, you have to use this if you want to get through the has five or whatever it might be. It's usually pick whatever you like and just do your own thing, and it, it'll probably work out for you, which is really cool to see. So thank you guys so very much. Tell me your five worst overclocks in the comments below, and how do you feel like the overclock situation is right now in Deep Rock? I think it's actually in a really, really good state. There are some odd overclocks, there are a couple weaker overclocks, but usually they're just weaker in comparison to others, and there are some generally pretty strong overclocks. 
But I think for the most part, we're at a really good state right now. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and I will talk to you next time. Bye-bye.